Today we're making a giant wreath that'll be the centerpiece of any holiday or Christmas decorations. This 8 foot wreath is the perfect addition to any walkway, home entrance, or garage door. So join me for this super amazing tutorial. To begin making our eight foot wreath, we need plywood. Now this is three quarters of an inch thick. You can go with a thinner one, but it becomes rather flimsy. So definitely go with a three quarter of an inch if you can. Next, we need to draw a half circle. Remember, this is gonna be hollow on the inside like a wreath, but we definitely need the base, a solid base for the wreath. So then I drew a circle and it's super simple. I'm gonna show you right now how to do it. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's rated for kids ages two to six years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written, and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So to draw the half circle is super simple. We need to put a screw right on the edge in the middle of the plywood. So the plywood is eight feet long. We measure at four feet and there we put the screw right there. Then we're going to attach a piece of nylon string and you want the nylon string to go almost to the edge. You're going to attach a pencil or a marker to the nylon string so that it can come right over here to the corner. Once you're here, you make sure it's nice and tight like that. Then we just simply go like this, just like that. And we're making a perfect half circle. I stop right here, I go to the other side, and we do the same thing. Once we're done with that, we have the first circle going. But let me bring the camera a little bit closer. You definitely wanna do another circle on the inside. It goes all the way around over there. And we're gonna be using the same nylon string right there to do an inner circle right over here. And we'll cut that out and we have our first half. It's super, super simple, so let's get to it. So the inner circle, I've measured it to 16 inches. You can do less, you can do more, but for me, I'm gonna do a 16 inch circle. So I've tied a new knot with the nylon string and we're off to the races. Let's make sure it's straight like this and then make sure you keep it tight and just turn with it, just like this. So now that we've cut our first piece, we put it on top of the new sheet of plywood because we need to trace it out. That's super simple. The first one was the hardest one, but now we need to trace it out. I've already done it with a marker because it's nighttime, so it's really dark. So now that we've traced it out, we can remove this and then cut this one. Again, all the tools, all the items I use are listed in the description of the video with the links there, so it makes it super simple for you to do the same thing. So to finish it off, we need to paint it. I'm using exterior latex paint in flat, and this one is called Wilderness by Valspar. You put one or two coats on it and let it dry. All right, so we painted one side, and I'm actually gonna paint both sides. Weather is a big factor with plywood, and it tends to warp when it rains or maybe when the snow starts to melt. So definitely paint both sides with exterior latex paint. So right over here, I have a piece of irregular cut plywood and we're gonna use it to tie these seams together. So I'm gonna get this piece of plywood I used from the remnants of this, put it just like that, and put one and a half, maybe two inch screws right over here to hold it all together. We have the same thing right over here. Make sure you line up the seams nicely, and once you do that, you can decide to paint it, which I, whoa, I almost fell. You can decide to paint it or leave it as is. We're gonna put this 
on the garage door. You can put this in the front of your home by the walkway or the front door, but I'm definitely putting this right next to the garage door. So let's screw this in. Now that we've turned it over, we need to start attaching the garland. I got these at Hobby Lobby when they were 60% off, but you can get them at Michaels, Walmart, Lowe's, or other arts and craft stores. So this one looks really good. I'm just going to start fluffing it out just like this, and then we're gonna start attaching it just like this. We're gonna get our stapler. I have a heavy duty stapler and we're going to start attaching them attaching them all the way around then we're going to do another row we're going to put as many rows to give it that nice fluffy look so i think i'm going to use about 10 of these but you can never have too much garland so let's get started i'll be using my heavy duty stapler and these 10 millimeter staples that i have here as always i link everything that i use down below in the description of the video Okay, so once you've fluffed out all the branches, we're going to be using the stapler to attach these small branches, not the actual main stem because it's too thick for these staples. So find yourself a small little branch right here and we just do this and bam, we got it there. So you can continue doing it along the entire garland and that way it stays in there steadfast. Now that we finished our wreath, we need to put it upright against the wall. Now some of you may not like this, but I'm actually going to drill into the wall through the vinyl siding to attach the wreath to the actual garage wall. The issue is that it's so large, it could fall over in windy or rainy weather, so I definitely want to anchor it to the wall. After the season has passed and I remove it, I'm going to fill in the two or three screw holes with exterior grade caulking and it'll be white so you won't be able to see it. I know some of you don't want to drill through your wall, but this is the only way that I feel comfortable anchoring it to this wall over here. So let's do it and let's put it up. I'll be using three inch exterior grade screws to go through the middle of the wreath into the wall. Behind the wall, there's two by four studs and I'm gonna make sure that I hit the stud so it anchors it very nicely. It's not gonna bother the garage door when it opens because there's enough clearance from the outside to the actual garage door. So it's totally fine to continue using your garage. Right over here on the top of the wreath, we're gonna be attaching screws. Now I'm using two and a half inch screws and we're spacing them about eight to maybe 10 inches. You could do it closer if you want. And these are gonna be the anchors for the parts of the wreath that we cannot put Christmas lights wrapped around. The bottom part of the top also has screws because we cannot wrap it all the way around because we screwed it to the wall. So we're using these anchors so that we can go up and down, up and down. We can go right to left. This makes it super simple. Putting on the lights is really the easiest part. So we're only wrapping it around like this. Going back and forth like this and doing that to the entire wreath. The only place that we're not doing this is all the way at the top. And that's because it's attached to the wall. So remember, the rest you can just keep on going around and around. And then we put the screws up here that I showed you. They're super handy because it can come right over here and we can loop it back and forth, back and forth, while these were wrapping around. You could technically do the screw method throughout the entire thing, but I thought it was unnecessary, so I only put screws on the top so that we can do the back and forth. So remember, from here 
to that side over there, it's just gonna be screw anchors right over here so that we can go up, down like this and just do it all the way on the top. And then the rest of the sides, we can just wrap it around. A quick tip that I wanna mention is that I set my wreath on a brick. You can use a block, you can use a brick like I did. The reason is I don't want it to touch the ground directly in case that there's snow or rain, I don't want it to be soaked into the plywood. So definitely do that and then attach it with screws at the top. That way when you're putting the Christmas lights and wrapping it around, you can wrap it really easy on the bottom. And remember, because we set our wreath on a brick over here, we can easily bring our Christmas lights all the way on the bottom and over it behind and back again. Unlike at the top that it's touching the wall, we can easily do it on the bottom because we have that clearance. The garage door will not disturb the actual wreath because of the clearance that we have from the door to the exterior part of the wall. Once we've reached the end, you can either leave it as is or put ornaments on it. I'm gonna put red ornaments on it, but you could just leave it like this. Either way, it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm.